Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to transpose one column that has many records into kind of a proper table. So for example, so let's say we have a column of multiple records here. And these are a person's name and their address and phone number. You can see that uh, we have Sally here, Mike here, uh, Puneet, Ming here. And we want to transpose it into kind of like a proper table where you'd have the, the name here in this column, address, and these two columns and the phone numbers. Now there are times uh, where we can have different types of records here. Maybe it doesn't have to be address names and addresses. It could be anything, but they're pretty much set. We have you know maybe four cells that have a predefined set for the first first record and uh, four an additional four or maybe five or six. But we want to basically transpose it into a proper table when you think about it. And I'll show you two ways that we can do this. Uh, the first way is actually uh, from the uh, Microsoft.com site. Um, they actually have a way where it's going to use an offset formula. And I'm just going to show it in here. It's already set here. And I'll show you how the mechanics of that particular formula work. And the second way is actually using Power Query. Uh, Power Query is a uh, add-on capability on Microsoft Excel 2013 and 2010. Uh, I think it's already in, in uh, 2016. Um, and Power Query enables you to do uh, this also. So let's show you how it's done with the formula way. So the formula here is called an offset formula. Let me just go ahead and run you through the mechanics of what's being done here. Um, the offset formula, basically what it's doing is it's going to bring you back the cells, bring you back the uh, output of a cell uh, offset from a starting point. So we're starting from A1 here. So usually the offset formula takes you at a starting point. Um, this is our starting point, A1. And it can say how many rows to go down or, or rows to go up how many columns go to the right or how many columns go to the left. And that, so whatever the endpoint is, it will give you back the value of that cell. So let me go ahead and go into cell C1 here. Let me bring up the formula evaluator to, to kind of step you through what this particular function or set of functions is doing, because we also have a row function and a column function here. So let me go into the formula evaluator here. Let me go under the formulas tab and go under evaluate formula under the formula auditing group. So once I click on that, it gives you an evaluate formula window. So, so I can just click on evaluate, and it's going to step through each of the different functions. So it's going to start with the row function here. And so what, it, what the row function is basically doing is it's indicating which row am I in. So I'm in the first row, so it's going to bring back the value of 1. right? And then it's going to minus 1. So in, in this instance, since we've offset where we really want to start off is a 1 here, we don't want it to we don't want it to go down any row because this is what's going to happen here is when we have a1 here and if this stayed one that's why we're minusing one here if this stayed one um, we would actually go down one so let me go ahead and explain what happens next when it uh, goes to zero and it multiplies by four so one minus one is zero and it's going to multiply by four because now it's taking that there are four fields for that record right Sally is the name the address, the, the first part of the address, the second part of the address, and then the phone number. So there's four here. So that's why it's multiplying by four. Now, when it multiplies by four and zero, it's going to get basically zero, of course. The reason why now it's going into this column here is we have situated where we want to put our, our table, the starting point of our table, in here. So this column is going to indicate which column am I in. So since I'm in C1, it's going to indicate I'm in column third column, A, B, C. All right, so it's going to bring back the number three. It's going to minus three because we don't want we we have our reference point here. So it's going to minus three, one, two, three. Right, and then basically what it's going to do is it's going to bring back a zero. Now you'll see that it makes a little bit more sense if we go into maybe like uh, the third column here. So let me just step you through here this part first. And once we click evaluate, that integer makes that zero. The integer just makes it a whole number. So basically, once we evaluate that, it becomes zero, zero. And zero plus zero, of course, is zero. And what the eventual output of this formula is saying is start at A1, go down zero rows, and go across zero columns. Basically, we're going to stay at A1. So it's going to bring you back Sally, right? That's what's going to happen. Let me go ahead and see what happens when we go to something like this. We're, we're at the second, we're at the second um, row, and then the uh, third column of this table, or basically the fifth column of this whole range here. So let me bring back the evaluate formula again, and 
we're going to offset row. So this row, now we're in the second row, so it's going to bring back the number 2. So 2 times 1 is going, uh, 2 minus 1 is going to be 1, right? And then times 4 is uh, 4, right? And then it's going to add that column. So basically what it's saying is I'm going to be in this column now. So this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 minus 3 because I want to start off of here, right? So click Evaluate. So I have I 5, A, B, C, D, E, the fifth column, minus 3. Uh, because I, I want to be at the third column of the range that I want to put this particular table in. Right? And then the integer of 2, so that makes it 2. So 4 plus 2, oops, so 4 plus 2 is going to be 6. So what it's going to do right now, it's going to say, I'm at a, A1, go down 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Los Angeles. And it's going to put it into this cell. Right? And then that's why you have Los Angeles there. So that's how the formula works in conjunction with the offset row and columns. Now, let's say we go ahead and uh, copy this formula. Select that, Control C, Escape to deselect that. Let me go into this demo tab. And let's say that we have a situation where we have um, kind of blanks here. Now, what we can do is we, we can take out the blanks if this was small, or there's other ways you can do it to take out the blanks. But let's say that uh, we didn't want, to, we didn't really want to care about taking out the blanks. We just want, we can just change the formula, and basically all we need to do is we can just go ahead and just paste the formula in. Let me go ahead and just paste the formula. Control V to paste the formula in, and what this four is indicating is you know there's four um, fields that are part of it. So what we're going to say is instead of four fields, we're going to include the fifth blank field here that is part of it. So all I, need, all I need to do is just change that to a 5. Right? Press Control Enter to stay in that cell. You see Sally shows up. Let me go ahead and just drag this out. Uh, about four fields. I don't need to drag it out five fields. It's, it's just going to bring back that blank. But let me go ahead and just drag it out four fields. And now we have our addresses. And if I just drag it down four, four rows, we have Ming, Puneet, and Mike here. Ming, Puneet, and Mike. Let me go ahead and select these range of columns. Double click to auto fit. And it basically does the same thing. So if you if you had two blanks or three blanks in between and they were consistent, all you need to do is just go ahead and change that from a 5 to a 6 to a 7. So now the second example I'm going to show is using Power Query. Now the, this particular example I got from uh, this book. The M is for Data Monkey by Ken Poles and Miguel Escobar. Really good book. If you have a billet, if you're in, into like learning different Power BI capabilities. And Power Query is one of them where you can uh, massage your data, manage your data. Uh, this is a good book to learn a lot of cool things from. And one of the things I picked up from this book is how to turn something like this, a, a basic one column full of records, into a proper table. So in order to get Power Query, let me go ahead and go to Demo 2 here. In order to use Power Query, if you've got Excel 2010 or 2013, you need to download that add-in from the Microsoft.com site. So you can just Google Power Query, download Microsoft.com, and download it. And after you download it, you need to add the add-in into Excel. I believe in 20, Excel 2016, it's already in there natively. But um, if you don't have it, if you have 2010 and 2013, you need to get it from Microsoft. So to do it in Power Query, let me go ahead and just select the, the first cell here, A1. Go to Power Query, and I want to get the Excel data from table. If I click on that, it's going to ask me, where's my table? And this range is too small, so I'm going to uh, say that this is going to be from A1 to A19. That's my range. And my table does not have headers. So what it's going to do is Power Query needs to bring this up as a table, and then bring it into the Power Query editor. So once I click OK, it's going to turn that range into a table and bring me into the query editor. Now once I'm in the query editor, what I need to do is I need to add two columns. Uh, the first column, go into the Add Column uh, tab here. The first column is going to be an index column. So I'm going to go ahead and click the, the drop down here. And I want to have the first column start from 0. So once I click on that, it's going to create another column. It's going to start from 0 and count all the way up by 1s. Now one thing that we want to note is uh, where we have our next set of records start. So the next set of records start here at Mike, and it's the fifth record here. Puneet starts at the tenth record here, and Ming starts at the fifteenth record there, or the fifteenth uh, place there, you know, the tenth place here and the fifth place there. So we see that there's a pattern. And so what we want to do is we want to have a second column that kind of recognizes that pattern. So what I want to do is I want to add another column, but this time I'm going to add from another, and I'm going to add standard, and I'm going to use this thing called Modelo. So what Modelo does is it takes the remainder 
of something based on what you want to divide by it. So basically, I'm going to choose the number 5. So enter a number from which you find the remainder of each column. So I want to divide. What it's going to do is it's going to take that index in, or the, the index of that column divided by 5 and show the remainder. And so, of course, if you divide by uh, the 5, if you divide 5 by 5, there is no remainder. So it would be 0. Same here with 10 and same here with 15. There's no remainder. That effectively becomes 0. So I go ahead and click OK. And what it's going to do is it inserted a modello there. So basically, that showed me that um, that is a new reference. Zero here. Zeros are where we start our new records. So once that's set, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and kind of do some transformation here. So I want to transform this column and pivot this column. So once I pivot this column, it's going to uh, create these numbers that go across and bring the corresponding uh, values for those particular rows across too. So I'll go ahead and click Pivot Column. And then I'm going to pivot column, and I'm going to bring uh, values columns, values from this column over. Uh, I'm going to select column 1, because that's where my values come from. And under Advanced Options, I don't we need to do any aggregation. So I'm going to go ahead and select that dropdown and click Don't Aggregate, and click OK. And once you, that's done, you notice that it, it looks like it's almost there. Um, but really, what I really want to do is have at least one row where it has uh, the name, the address, all in one row instead of kind of like all staggered here. So what I want to do is I want to select from this cell here, push this column there, press the Shift button, and select that. So it kind of selects one, two, and three of those columns. And I want to kind of fill these values up. So anything where there's a no, this value fills up. Um, this is going to go fill up here, and, and this New York is going to fill up here. So we'll see what happens there when I when I do that. So under the Transform tab, under Fill, go ahead and click Fill Up. And what we've seen here now is it's kind of filled it up. We have at least one row where it's all complete here, right? And so what I can do here now is I can just go ahead and get rid of any of those other extraneous type of rows that kind of don't serve its purpose. So I'll go ahead and click on the drop down here and just get rid of the nulls. I don't I don't want to see any of the nulls. Click OK and we have our table here. Uh, and I'll just get rid of these other ones here. I'll go, I'll go ahead and select that, right click and re remove column. I'll remove that one, click this one, right click, remove, remove that column and now we have our table. And so what I can do is go back to the home button and click close and load and it's going to load it in as a new sh new sheet and I have my table here and so I can just go ahead and type the appropriate um, field headers name I can type name address uh, city city state and phone right and I have a proper table here now so I basically turn uh, something like this into something like this using Power Query so there you have it. There is are two ways that we can turn a uh, data a data set uh, that in one column into a proper table format. And there's two examples that we have. One that's coming from Microsoft.com using functions, and the other one that's coming from the MS for Data Monkey book by Ken Poles and Miguel Escobar, and that's using Power Query. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.